My name's Kevin Dixon. Um, I'm a local historian and I've got a particular interest in the little bits of local history that people don't know about. These are the kind of things that, uh, that people ask in pubs that come up and it's the kind of th things that people don't know about, the things you weren't taught in school. And we're in here today in beautiful Kingsbridge in the South Hams uh, to look very briefly at a little bit of history that we know a little bit about. Now, uh, this begins in 1066. Uh, and it begins with the conquering of Anglo-Saxon England. Now, everybody knows the story about King Harold. Uh, the narrative tends to be that uh, as soon as uh, Harold got his uh, apocryphal arrow in the eye, then, um, then the rest of England fell under Norman control. And the Normans uh, transformed England. We, uh, the Normans came in, they replaced the um, Anglo-Saxon aristocracy, they set up towns, they set up castles, the old traditional Motton Bailey that we hear about, and, and the South West and Devon are, are actually covered in these things. Um, what tends uh, not to be told very much about is that the, um, that the overcoming of the Anglo-Saxons wasn't as quick and as sudden as we thought. There were uprisings, there was a very uh, viciously put down uprising in the north of England called the Harrying of the North. Um, but in the southwest, um, uh, Exeter held out, and King William, actually, in 1068, actually had to send another army using sort of English troops as well as Norman troops, and they laid siege to um, the city of Exeter. And in the city of Exeter, uh, you had the sons of King Harold, who was king at the, uh, killed at the Battle of Hastings, and he also had Harold's wife. Um, they, the city eventually fell after a, um, quite a prolonged siege, and then. Um, gave loyalty to uh, William I, William the Conqueror, and then the sons of King Harold fled to Ireland. And in Ireland they enlisted the help of King Dermat, the Irish king, to reinvade the southwest. And the idea was to, um, to try and trigger a revolt in the southwest. So King Dermat, who'd already had sort of fairly sort of lengthy uh, relationship with the Godwin family, uh, actually lent some uh, ships and lent a small army to the sons of King Harold and they um, came across the Irish Sea and they landed outside Bristol. They tried to take the city, the town. Uh, they didn't manage to do that. There wasn't an uprising. So in despair, uh, what we then do know from uh, the chronicles at the time, and bearing in mind chronicles were actually sort of written by, um, by people who were a, a number of years later and sympathetic uh, to that sort of Norman invasion. Uh, we then know that they didn't want to go home empty-handed, so they took their ships and they went along the north coast of Devon, actually came round and uh, sort of pillaging as they went, and they landed somewhere around here. And we don't have much more information than that, but we're in the beautiful um, estuary here, and presumably those ships not wanting to go empty-handed, would have possibly come up here. Would have been a completely different landscape, of course, much more tidal. Um, and if you think about the traditional idea of sort of Viking longships, that's the kind of sort of vessel we're talking about. So what we're really doing is, if you can imagine those ships possibly, probably coming up here, uh, mooring, and then those men getting off those ships, and then um, heading inland, and we know that they pillaged, that's the term they use, pillaged, so basically grab everything they could as they actually sort of went inland. And we know those five manors that were, were badly damaged and badly pillaged. And all of those goods and presumably people, because we are talking about a slave raiding society, took those people and took those goods back, anything that wasn't nailed down, and took them back to Ireland. And that was probably one of the, the sort of last failed attempts at an uprising. And it sort of devastated this area. Don't know much more about it than that. But it's just one of those little snippets of history that we, we don't know about and it's worth remembering.